eight products. Well, seven products and a free tool. Eight releases. Elgato announced so many things today in what is probably the most packed announcement spree the company has ever done. From webcams to mic arms to a whole new stream deck, let's talk about it all. This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Get access to my own streaming site Nebula when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the video description. I'm Vox, the stream professor, and I'm releasing full in-depth reviews of most of the products announced today, covering everything you need to know, including one in a couple hours today, so hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay informed. Elgato had their big annual product announcement today, announcing eight new releases for streamers, and yet not a single one was a capture card. The budget and gaming focused capture card company has come a long way towards providing full solutions for kidding out your stream setups these days. They grow up so fast. Starting with the big one that I think most people are going to ask about, Elgato Facecam. Elgato has made a 1080p 60fps webcam that supplies uncompressed video over USB 3.0 with a Type-C connector and a pretty badass app to manage settings and save them to the webcam itself. So settings persist past reboot and even across PCs. The webcam has a fixed focus lens but is tuned to actually work when you're up close to the lens as long as you're not closer than a foot away. So it can look a bit better than the other fixed focus webcams that we looked at on the channel. They won't share which sensor they're using, just that it's a Sony Starvis sensor, a CMOS sensor from them of some sort, but it seems to be similar to what you'd find in other webcams like the Razer Keo Pro, for example. I've snuck some face cam usage in videos and streams already, and I have a full in-depth review on the face cam already ready to rock and will be releasing in a couple hours, so stay tuned for that. Next up is probably an unexpected release, but one that I am beyond stoked for, Wave XLR. This takes the killer features of Elgato's Wave 1 and Wave 3 microphones, the virtual audio cable Wave Link software, and the 20 dB safety track clip guard feature, and crams them into a very high quality interface. The interface can provide a full 48 volt phantom power for condenser mics and has plenty of gain for dynamic mics too. I'm using it right now. Wave XLR provides up to 75 decibels of total gain, 52 dB of that being analog gain and 23 dB being digital. This is plenty for gain hungry mics like the Shure SM7B or Electro Voice RE20, with me getting a signal hot enough for the RE20 around 40 decibels. Plus you have the 20 dB of headroom to not peak, clip, or distort with their clip guard feature as well. Wave XLR is one of two products today that feature swappable face plates with the ability to customize your own or order custom ones. No word for pricing on those yet, however. I still have some quirks with Wavelink and I find the physical IO on board to be embarrassingly limited, but it's a pretty neat release. Full review of the Elgato Wave XLR will release on Saturday, July 17th, with early access already available on my own streaming platform along with reviews of all of these new products. My videos are higher quality there, ad-free, and often extended from the YouTube versions. The site is called Nebula, and we've partnered with CuriosityStream. Nebula features YouTube's top education creators such as MKBHD, Low Spec Gamer, and Renee Ritchie. CuriosityStream saw what we were doing for educational content and wanted to form an educational power team. We've worked out a deal where if you sign up with the link below, you not only get access to CuriosityStream and their library of thousands of educational and documentary content, but you get access to Nebula for free for the entire duration of your subscription to CuriosityStream. For a limited time, CuriosityStream is offering 26% off their annual plan, making it less than $15 per year for both CuriosityStream and Nebula. While you're there, check out Super Intelligence Beyond Human, a documentary posing questions about how AI might be able to help us, why we might fear it, and to what extent its cleverness is actually useful. Head to curiositystream.com slash epos for the best deal in streaming and get access to both sites for under $15 per year. It's crazy, just do it. Next up, we have a pair of microphone arms, the Wave Mic Arm and Mic Arm LP. These are pretty beefy and capable mic arms with integrated cable channels. The normal Wave mic arm is designed to be extra tall to go over your monitors if you want. The normal vertical reach is 29.5 inches with an included riser arm getting you another 5.9 inches in height. The Wave mic arm LP is designed to stay close to the desk and possibly go under your monitors. This was inspired by some teasers that they had with the release of the Wave microphones and people regularly asking what mic arms they use. Both mic arms are compatible with the multi-mount accessories, so the flex arm kit and things like that as well. Instead of a review in a vacuum, I actually have a full microphone arm buyer's guide comparing a ton of notable microphone arms together coming tomorrow, Friday, July 16th. Again, should already be up on Nebula. In fact, I'm editing that right now. 
As much as the Elgato Stream Deck is one of my favorite product releases related to streaming ever, the Stream Deck Mark II falls under the less interesting category of announcements today. This is mainly because it's just a quality of life refresh rather than a whole radical new product. There are important differences here though, with a new, more rugged stand locked to a fixed angle and a detachable USB-C cable. At long last, of all the Stream Decks Elgato have released, the OG always had the worst cable management. Detachable USB-C makes this much easier to use, and you can bring your own cable if you desire for, you know, better lengths or shorter lengths. This is also the second product to offer a detachable faceplate for you to customize. You know, I'm gonna make some really sick ones for my studio here, though I was unable to get them completed, you know, prior to these videos coming out. There will be a growing range of epic designs to choose a faceplate from, according to Elgato, or you can paint your own, of course. Combine that with custom icons, GIF icons, uh, new screen savers, and you've basically got a full control over how the Stream Deck looks now. Now they just need to release a translucent case design. You know, we need to get back to that. Also, if you take off the stand and the faceplate, you're basically left with just the brain of the Elgato Stream Deck, allowing it to be more easily integrated into other, you know, custom projects or solutions, which is pretty awesome. Otherwise, though, it's the same 15 key setup in front of an LCD screen, lots of hotkeys, visual feedback, animated GIF icons, and new integrations and plugins being regularly added in the software. In fact, the Stream Deck software just got a huge update. Video on that linked below. The last two product announcements Elgato talked about today are the Light Strip Extension Kit, which allows you to add an additional two meters to the end of your Elgato Light Strip, it comes with a DIY parts kit, and a wall mount. This is basically the shorter version of the Archon wall mount that I've recommended for a long time, and even uses the same uh, ball head style, which the multi-mount also uses, so that's pretty interesting. This has not been a proprietary thing to Elgato at all. I don't currently use this in my studio here, uh, but in my past two apartment setups, I use the Archon wall mount for my main desktop webcam camera, usually a Panasonic G7, and it worked wonderfully. So I can certainly recommend this for those who want to anchor their camera into their wall. No more desk shake! Lastly, Elgato announced a free resource, Studio Configurator. This is a browser-based studio modeling app built on Unity. This is designed to help you visualize, design, and plan your home studio using 3D modeling so that you can get, you know, get things laid out right the first time, potentially measured right the first time to see what you're really working with with your space. The main drawback being that they're Probably only really going to support Elgato and Corsair products and Origin, I guess, by nature. So if you have just about anything else involved other than generic models, you won't really get specifics. I think they might be leaving potential on the table, though, as I could see this being used to generate an awesome streaming setup backdrop for those who use green screens as well. Woo! This was a lot of announcements. I love times like these where we get a ton of stuff being thrown into the streaming space. Notably missing, of course, was the uh, custom color Elgato Wave panels that we were told were coming, or any sort of capture card news at all, though ongoing shortages certainly play a role there. I've been told by basically every capture card company at this point to not expect HDMI 2.1 capture cards until 2022, and that was pre-shortages, but I can still hold out hope. What was your favorite announcement or release today? Let us know over on Discord at discord.gg slash eposfox. Hit like and subscribe. I'm Epos Fox, the stream professor. Be kind. Rewind.